Hi everyone, Kenji here, your sculptor, and welcome back to Life of Clay for another sculpting video. I know it's been quite a long time since we last did the sculpting here. I have had to halt for a while because of some commissioned pieces that I need to finish on time. But anyway, here we are now, and today I'll be sculpting a pygmy seahorse, the Hippocampus bargibanti. And before we begin, please consider subscribing if you haven't subscribed yet, and don't forget to turn on the bell icon to get notification whenever I upload a new video. Okay, so come bring the clay on and let's play hide and seek with this cute little seahorse. And to begin with, and as part of our sculpting ritual, I first draw a simple sketch of our subjects. Now let's build their armatures. For the coral, I use this 1mm stainless steel wires which I then bend to position and bind them up with yarn. Then I added some smaller wires for the smaller branches by wrapping them onto the main wire. Then I apply clear resin to saturate the yarn and this will strengthen the bond even more. Next, for the seahorse armature, I just fashioned this wire into hook and made some loops to form the basic structure. And after that, applying two parts epoxy on it and cover it with aluminum foil. Bulk it up and form its basic shape. And we can now start sculpting the coral. I just roll out a slender snake of coarse clay here, flatten it and cut into appropriate length. Cover each branch and blend them in. I'm gonna work on its top section first. Then I'm gonna shape these cut pieces of clay into small balls for the polyps of the coral and I'm gonna stick them on the branches. Hippocampus bargibanti, also known as bargiban seahorse or the pygmy seahorse, is a seahorse of the family Signatidae found in the central Indo-Pacific area. This is also one of the smallest seahorse species in the world, usually less than 2 cm in size and lives exclusively on fine corals called gorgonians, clinging on it using their long prehensile tail. Then I lay a piece of plastic film over it and using this ring tip tool that I personally made, I just press it encircling each ball, dragging their edges down and turning them into dome shape. If you notice guys, there is no background music in this video. What can you say about it? Do you prefer my videos with or without jingle? Please let me know your thoughts about it in the comment section, okay? Then I just refine their edges to make them smooth. And now I'm adding fair light texture on the gaps of the polyps using this explorer tool. And now I'm dusting it with corn flour to lessen the stickiness of the surface as a preparation for the next texturing. And I'm gonna use this another personalized tool that I made to add their folded tentacles that resemble star shape on top of each polyp. I'm just pressing it gently accompanied with pivoting motion to imprint the details on the surface of each polyp. Just like that. Looks easy, isn't it? And then continuing the lower section of the coral, applying the same procedure. And I decided to add one small branch near the base section to give balance to the coral's overall structure. And now our coral is ready for baking. Next is sculpting the seahorse. I just cover it up with a thin sheet of coarse clay and form its basic shape. What I'm adding here is the base of its dorsal fin. Then shaping its head and adding all its details including the coronet, eyes, and some tubercles. Bargiban seahorse has a short snout, rounded knob-like coronet, and irregular bulbous tubercles on the body that matches the color and shape of the polyps of its host species of gorgonian coral. 
while its body matches the gorgonian stem. It has a rounded spine above each eye and on each cheek. Two color morphs are recorded for this species. One is pale gray or purple with pink or red tubercles. The second is yellow with orange tubercles. They are able to change their coloration to blend almost entirely with their host fan. They are so well camouflaged that this pygmy seahorse was only discovered after a host gorgonian was collected and observed by marine biologist George Bargibant in 1969. The next year, they were officially named by Whiteley as Bargibant's Pygmy Seahorse. Then I lay a plastic film over it and add details on its eyes and on its mouth. Now I'm adding the rest of irregular bulbous tubercles around its body, and in shaping out and smoothing out the tubercles, same procedures is applied as with the polyps of the coral. Adults are usually found in pairs or cluster of pairs, with up to 28 pygmy seahorses recorded on a single gorgonian and maybe monogamous. As with other seahorses, the male carries the young, the female lays her eggs in a brood pouch in his trunk region. Then he fertilized and incubated them until birth, with gestation averaging two weeks. Then he expelled a brood of 34 live young called fry, which look like miniature adults and are independent from birth, and received no further parental care. Pygmy sea horses presumably feed on small crustaceans and zooplanktons, and they can live to be one year on average. I am now refining the tubercles and then adding soft wavy texture on its skin. Then making shallow incision on the base of the dorsal fin and pectoral fin. And after that, let's put it in the oven for the first curing. Let us now proceed and sculpt its tail. I adjust the length of the tail a little bit by wrapping a copper wire on the stainless steel wire reinforcing it with yarn and glue. Let us now cover it with a snake of clay and shape it out into a slender and pointy tail. Then I add few pairs of tubercles all the way to its tip, blend them in and smooth them out. Then adding some texture on it. And we can now cure it with heat gun. Let us now make its fins and I'll be using the silicone mold that I made year ago which has fin raised texture on it. And I just sandwiched this small piece of clay between this plastic film and press gently on the chosen fin size. And using this rubber tip tool to add ray texture on top of it and because of the gentle pressure while pressing this tool, the ray texture underneath imprint on the other side of the clay at the same time. Then I just attach them to this wire by their bases and cure them with heat gun. And after that I just trim off the excess clay to give their final shape. Then I pull out my 1 is to 1 liquid silicone here to mold them. Now the mold is ready and I just pull out the fins out and mix some clear resin. Pour it into the mold cavities and let them cure. And there we go, the fins are now ready. Let us now move on and do the painting. And first, I'm gonna prime them with white gesso. Then painting them with a very light pink paint mix of 5 parts titanium white and 1 part alizarin crimson. Then let's work on the coral first. 
and I use wash of alizarin crimson in painting the polyp's mouth. And look how the watery paint mix runs into those tiny canals, accentuating them very quickly. Then I just add blotchy patterns on the gaps between the polyps. Next, painting our seahorse, and I use alizarin crimson and bright red mix in painting its tubercles. Then adding irregular vein patterns on the tubercles using the light pink mix. Then I also add blotchy patterns around it. And then painting the iris of its eyes with black. And now it's the time to add its fins, and I use super glue in attaching them. Then I just brush them with very thin coat of clear resin to make them more transparent. And finally sealing them with matte water-based varnish. And I use matte for this one to simulate the underwater look. And we can now put our pygmy seahorse on its gorgonian coral. Cosclay's flexibility makes this seahorse tail coilable and it really makes it grasp well on the coral. So cute, isn't he? And there it is, our pygmy seahorse is finally done. I hope you like it and if you do, please give this video a thumbs up, leave your comments about it and share this video with your friends. I'll be making a prehistoric sculpture in the next episode so stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe. And your subscription guys will help me to reach my channel's goal and definitely will support me to continue producing videos like this one in the future. And also don't forget to turn on the notification bell icon so you won't miss out any of our exciting future videos. You can also follow me in my other social media accounts and their links are listed in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching and I really appreciate your support guys. See you again next time. Have a wonderful day and evening everyone. Bye!